subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello. In this video, we will discuss the summary of the play Look Back in Anger. First of all, let's have a brief introduction to the play. The play Look Back in Anger was written in 17 days by John Osborne in 1956. The play was premiered at London's Royal Court Theatre on 8 May 1956 by the English Stage Company. It is an autobiographical play based on Asborn's unhappy marriage to actress Pamela Lang and their life in cramped accommodation in Derby. The play is story of Jimmy Potter, his wife Alison, his friend Cliff and Alison's friend Helena. Among them, the most dominating character is Jimmy Potter. The play received encouraging reviews on its opening. However, the play caused a sensation among the people when its first act was shown on television, which attracted more people towards the theatre. Now, as Jimmy is dominating character in the story, he has been portrayed as angry, abusive and critical. Jimmy belongs to working class. Now talking about Alison, she belongs to middle class and has been described as an elusive personality. She is calm and hardly responses with anger to Jimmy's criticism. She has a spirit of tolerance. Summary of Act First The first scene is set in a flat occupied by Jimmy Potter, his wife Alison and his friend Cliff. Jimmy and Cliff are shown seated in chairs and reading newspapers while Alison is ironing clothes. Meanwhile, Jimmy breaks the silence and complains that every Sunday he has to go through the same kind of book reviews and asks Cliff if he feels the same. When Cliff replies in negative, Jimmy calls him an ignorant peasant. Then Alison asks what Jimmy is talking about. Jimmy repeats what he had already said to Cliff. Alison answers that she has not yet gone through the Sunday's papers. Jimmy then complains that his wife hardly pays any attention to his words. Even he complains that his wife begins to yawn when he talks to her. Cliff then tries to stop him from criticizing his wife. Jimmy in anger snatches the newspaper from Cliff's hands and starts reading it. Jimmy says that there are only two high-quality newspapers on Sundays, one which Jimmy himself is reading and one Cliff is reading. Cliff then mentions the news in which Archbishop has appealed to all Christians to help in manufacturing of the hydrogen bomb. Jimmy himself reads what Archbishop has said and ironically suggests that all this stuff has been written by Alison's father. Cliff then urges Alison not to pay attention to Jimmy as he is deliberately trying to be offensive. While Alison continues ironing, Jimmy becomes impatient and complains of boredom and depression on Sundays. Cliff then suggests that they should go to the pictures. Alison replies that she will not be able to go. Jimmy replies that he would not like his enjoyment of a film being ruined by the kind of crowd that visits a cinema on Sunday nights. Jimmy says that neither Alison nor Cliff can come out of their laziness. He even tells them that they both are devoid of human enthusiasm. Jimmy then asks Cliff for matches to light his pipe. But Cliff refuses because the room is already stinking with the smell of the pipe. Alison says that she has got used to the smell of Jimmy's pipe. Jimmy replies that she easily gets used to everything. Jimmy then asks Alison if her friend Webster is coming that evening. Alison replies that she might drop in. Jimmy tells her that he won't tolerate Webster that night because whenever he meets Webster, he begins to feel exaggerated. Alison ironically says that Jimmy had felt equally exaggerated in the company of Madeline who used to be Jimmy's mistress. Cliff replies that Jimmy exactly does not know who Madeline was because he had several mistresses. Jimmy praises Webster and tells them that he is the only friend of Alison 
who has guts and sensitivity and her other friends are devoid of both these qualities. Arizan then urges Jimmy not to speak about her friends in this manner. But Jimmy now begins to talk about Arizan's brother, Nagel, and calls him the straight backed. But Arizan remains silent even after the bitter criticism about her family. Jimmy continues to humiliate her family. Cliff then tries to divert Jimmy's attention towards musical concert, which according to Cliff might have started on the radio. When Alison keeps silence, Jimmy turns on the radio to listen to uh, the musical program. Meanwhile, Alison completes the ironing of Cliff's trousers and hands over the trousers to Cliff. Cliff puts his arms around Alison's waist and kisses her and thanks her politely. Now Alison continues her ironing. But this time, Jimmy objects to her ironing as the sound from the boat disturbed Jimmy. Alison tells him that she is about to finish ironing. Then Jimmy describes all women noisy and starts again uh, criticizing Alison. Caleb then asks Jimmy to apologize for being so nasty and rude to everybody. But Jimmy grapples with Caleb and both fall down on the floor. Alison says that this house is becoming more and more like a zoo every day. As Jimmy and Cliff continue with wrestling, they strike with iron bolt and Alison's arm comes in contact with hot iron and she cries out in pain. Cliff rushes to the bathroom to get a bit of soap which will soothe the burning sensation on Alison's arm. As Cliff applies soap on Alison's burning, she thanks him. Cliff affectionately kisses her head and tells Alison that he is fond of her. Alison replies that feeling of love has now gone out of her and she even cannot remember what it was to feel young. Meanwhile, Alison informs Cliff that she is pregnant and tells him that she has not yet informed Jimmy. Cliff urges Alison uh, to inform Jimmy about her pregnancy. Meanwhile, Jimmy enters and Cliff asks him if Alison is not beautiful. Cliff also wonders why Alison married a man like Jimmy. Kilip then leaves the room and reminds Alison not to forget to tell Jimmy. By hearing this, Jimmy undergoes a sentimental change and asks Alison what Kilip had meant by not to forget. He puts his head on the belly of Alison, then they both kiss each other affectionately. Jimmy describes Alison a beautiful, great-eyed scarab, while Alison calls him a jolly super bear. Now Alison gets ready to tell Jimmy that she is pregnant but Cliff returns uh, and tells her that there is a phone call for her and the caller is Helena. Alison then goes to receive the call without telling Jimmy that she is pregnant. Jimmy then reveals to Cliff that Helena is one of Alison's old friends and his natural enemy. Jimmy wonders what that woman need uh, from Alison when she is not interested in women and has money love affairs. Alison now enters and informs Jimmy and Cliff that Helena has come to their town to act in a play and she will stay with them in their flat. Hearing this, Jimmy gets annoyed with Alison and makes bitter comments against her. Alison and Cliff feel completely helpless. Summary of Act 2nd Scene 1st In this scene, we see Helena has arrived and is living at the porter's flat. Jimmy is blowing trumpet and both Alison and Helena dislike hearing the notes of the trumpet. During the conversation, Helena asks Alison if Cliff is in love with her. Alison replies that they are simply fond of each other and not more than that. Alison then gives an account of the circumstances in which she married Jimmy. She tells Helena that her parents were against the marriage. At the time, Jimmy was without job and no place to live in and they did not have any money. For a few months, they lived at Hugh's flat and calls it a nightmare because both Jimmy and Hugh behaved like savages. Meanwhile, Cliff enters and asks them if the tea is ready. He also calls out to Jimmy for tea and asks him stop blowing trumpet. Jimmy enters and tells them that one who does not like jazz cannot have feelings for music and for human beings. Jimmy then describes Alison as sweet and sticky on the outside but white, messy and disgusting inside. When Jimmy finds Alison dressed, he asks her where she is going. 
Allison replies that she is going to church with Helena. Jimmy does not believe in going to church and had stopped his wife as well in the past. Jimmy then remembers her, how he rescued her from the life she was living before marriage and starts accusing her mother and describes her mother as rough and tough. Jimmy then says that one day he will write a book and the book will not be like Wordsworth's poetry, the expression of emotions recollected in tranquility, but his book will be recollected in fire and in blood. Jimmy then continues his habit of accusing others and calls Helena hypocritical. Helena tells Jimmy if he had been staying near to her, she would have slapped his face. Jimmy then gives an account of his father's death but it hardly produced any effect on the listeners. Helena then leaves for church and asks Alison to follow her. Jimmy tries to stop Alison but she pays no attention to Jimmy. Helena tells Jimmy that there is a telephone call for him downstairs. When Jimmy goes to attend the call, Helena informs Alison that she has sent a telegram to her father to come immediately and take Alison from this place. Jimmy returns and informs Alison that Mrs. Tanner, whose mother is seriously ill, and asks Alison they must go to see her. But Alison walks quickly towards the door and leaves for church with Helena. Summary of Act 1st, Scene 2nd Now, in this scene, we see Colonel Redfern has arrived in response to Helena's telegram. Alison informs him about the post-marital circumstances and her deeming relations with Jimmy. She informs her father that Jimmy has gone to see Mrs. Tanner who is seriously ill. Redfern asks Alison if she is the same lady who has helped Jimmy in the sweet stall business and Alison answers in the affirmative. Alison goes on to say how Jimmy treats her and tells him that Jimmy hates her family. Alison then starts packing in order to go away with her father. Helena enters and asks Alison if she needs her help in packing but Alison tells her that she has already finished. Meanwhile, Cliff enters and asks Alison if she is really going and will not wait till Jimmy's return. Alison replies that she is really going and will not wait for Jimmy. Alison hands over an envelope to Cliff for Jimmy and leaves with her father. Cliff then hands over the envelope to Helena and goes out to eat something. A little later, Jimmy arrives and Helena gives him the envelope and Jimmy begins to read the note that was inside the envelope. In the note, Alison has written that she is going away in order to get peace. Jimmy then mocks at the words written in the letter and asks Helena if she has dictated Alison. He also asks her what she is doing here and warns her to stay away. Helena reveals him that Alison is going to have a baby but Jimmy does not react to this news excitedly. Jimmy then threatens Helena to leave but Helena in response slaps his face. Helena then suddenly kisses Jimmy and pulls him down beside her. Summary of Act 3rd Scene 1st In this scene, we come to know that several months have passed and Alison's personal belongings have been replaced by Helena's. Jimmy and Cliff are reading newspapers while Helena is ironing clothes. Jimmy is smoking his pipe and Cliff objects and calls his pipe sticking. Jimmy in response calls Cliff stinking. Cliff then asks Helena if she is annoyed by the pipe. Helena replies that she likes the smell of pipe. Jimmy and Cliff then discuss news reports published in the Sunday newspapers. Meanwhile, Jimmy asks Cliff to make tea but Cliff refuses and pushes him back violently. Jimmy in response attacks Cliff and they both fall down on the floor. Cliff then decides to leave the sweet stall and will try his luck somewhere else. Jimmy replies that Cliff is free to do whatever he wants. Helena now comes and gives Cliff his shirt after ironing. Helena regrets over Cliff's decision of leaving Jimmy and sweet stall. Jimmy then asks Helena to come close to him. Helena comes and tells Jimmy that she loves her. Both then kiss and embrace each other. Jimmy then goes to the door to go into Cliff's room but before he reaches the door, Alison enters. Jimmy is stunned for some time 
and then tells Helena that her friend has come to see her. Both the women are left alone looking at each other. Summary of Acts 3rd Scene 2nd In this scene, Jimmy is blowing his trumpet in Cliff's room. Alison asks Helena if Jimmy is still smoking the pipe which she used to hate. Helena replies in affirmative and Alison regrets for paying visit there. Helena, however, consoles Alison by saying that she has more right to stay here rather than her. Alison now wants B Helena believe that she has not come to separate them but because of some feeling and curiosity. Helena replies that she believes Alison but her relation with Jimmy now seems to her to be more wrong and terrible than ever. Helena then decides to leave Jimmy and make an end to their relation. Alison, however, urges Helena not to leave Jimmy as he needs her. Now Helena, who is feeling irritated by the sound of the trumpet, shouts at Jimmy to stop playing it because she can't think properly. She also shouts at him because she wants to talk to him. As Alison tries to leave, Helena stops her and tells her that she is determined to leave. Meanwhile, Jimmy enters and notices that Alison looks pale and sick. Helena tries to explain Jimmy that Alison has gone through abortion but Jimmy stops her and tells her that he can see with his own eyes. Jimmy then asks what Alison is doing here. Helena replies him to be sensible and not talk rot. She then informs them that she will pack up her things and will catch the first train to London. Both Jimmy and Alison look at her in surprise. As Helena leaves, Jimmy is shocked. Then the church bells ring and the sound has always annoyed Jimmy. Now Alison gets ready to leave but Jimmy starts talking to her. He tells her that she could not send flowers to Mrs. Tanner's funeral. Jimmy then gives an emotional speech which brings tears in Alison's eyes and she weeps silently. Alison then collapses at Jimmy's feet but Jimmy bends and takes her trembling body in his embrace. Jimmy tells her not to cry because he cannot bear to see her in such situation. He then reminds her the game of beer at Scarl which they used to play and tells her they will again be the beer and the squirrel.